Well, good evening, everyone, and, and welcome uh, to our extravaganza this evening. My name is Father Richard DeLilio. I'm an oblate of St. Francis de Sales, and on behalf of the oblates of the Wilmington, Philadelphia province, we are happy to have you join with us in a very unique and inspirational event. The first Salesian Service Award celebration will honor Father William Keach. So we're pleased to have you with us tonight. I'm really honored to have you here, as a matter of fact. To start off this event, I'd like to invite our Assistant Provincial, Father Michael Murray, who will give the opening prayer. We recall that we are in the presence of God. Loving Creator, in the Gospel of John, we hear why you took on our image and likeness in the person of your Son, Jesus, that we might have life and have life to the full. Tonight, we celebrate a shining example of what it looks like to accept God's invitation to live life to the full. In the legacy of service of Father William Keach, oblate of St. Francis de Sales, we see a man who is not merely blessed by many years of life. He is also blessed by so much life in his many years. May Father Bill's example encourage each of us, each in our own unique way and vocation, to experience the fullness of life that only comes from loving God and loving one another. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Tonight is a very special occasion, as I said already, and it can't be more special than what we're about to do. We honor an incredible man that I've known since I entered the Oblates. In fact, he was the first Oblate I ever met in the Oblates, and I was drawn to him exactly because he was such a personable and intriguing kind of person. And that hasn't changed over these many years. So this prestigious award uh, is presented tonight for the first time, and I can think of no other person worthy of this than Father William Keach. The second celebration is in honor of Father Bill's 95th birthday, and he doesn't look a day over 94. He became officially the oldest oblate in the province. This is hard to tell, with the social life that he still maintains at this age. I, I can't tell you how many times his students come back to visit with him and tell the same stories they told way back in the 60s, and they still laugh the same way and so heartily too. So our program tonight includes a tribute video, which I'm sure you will all enjoy, and the award ceremony and some wonderful entertainment from Slazy Adams School's drama program where Bill spent many years teaching, and, and a lot of, of those years he was there, he worked with Father Sprague in the drama department as a, and as a faculty member. Before we get on with the tribute, we'd really like to thank his many friends and former students and, and uh, other uh, acquaintances that he had along the way who took the time to share some memorable stories uh, with us about Father Keats. In fact, they shared so many good times and so many good memories I thought we should have changed this to a canonization ceremony. I kept looking for something somebody would say that was degrading, but couldn't find any. They just talked about wonderful things about Father Keats. And I'm sure you're smiling now because you can only think of wonderful things about Father Keats. I know Father Keats is overjoyed to be here to share his life story with you. I think that's because you, all of you, play such a notable part of that story in his life. And it even gives him consolation now as he lives out as the days that he has, thinking of all the good times he had with all of you. Every other uh, near and far wants to say thank you in a very sincere way for the wonderful ways you've helped them live out their retirement years. And I think because of your kindness, they're going to live to be as old as Father Keach. Well, we hope that's true. And I hope it's true that you continue to help us. We, we have a wonderful, heartwarming uh, evening plan for you tonight, and uh, I'm sure you're going to enjoy it. And we ho we certainly hope you enjoy the special tribute we have made because so many of you contributed so many things to make it make it work. I, I think what you'll see is what we enjoy in our community about Father William Keach, and that is that he smiles a lot. He's always good for a joke. He he loves to paint, and I I, I want to be like him when I'm 95, where he has a schedule that every day when he gets up, he goes all day long. He, there's no time to do anything else but do the things on his schedule. And he always has 
a good temperament and good humor. That's what we love about Father Keats, and I'm sure that's what all of you love and remember, is that funny laugh he has, it's a crazy laugh, but it's such a, such a, uh, a communicative kind of laugh, and it's good humor. It's just so wonderful to enjoy. So let's begin this tribute tonight, sharing fun, sharing moments of joy, and all those other wonderful things that goes with enjoying a man's life who lived to be the ripe, a ripe old age, but but you wouldn't know it. You just think he's as young as he was when he first entered the Albany of St. Francis of Sales. Father Keach was my miracle messenger. There have been critical moments in my life, critical junctures. Father has been there, and sometimes I would have thought that it was gonna go in one direction, and because of him, it went in a completely different direction. An outstanding chaplain. He's just a, a great guy, and he enjoys, uh, he enjoys us, and we enjoy him. Very much into you. If you would meet him, he'd be very much into you, not into himself. That's just the kind of person he is, always caring about other people, wanting to do something positive for him, and he shares his talents with all of us. So, what can you say? Father, God bless you. 95 years young, you know, we're, we're so happy for you. Happy birthday, right? He's very uh, welcoming, down to earth. He'll put you at ease. Very faithful, oblate, a very holy man. He's an example. He's really an example for so many of us. He does have a tremendous sense of humor. He is the fastest guy with a walker I have ever seen. Well, the highest compliment I can pay him is, in my opinion, he's a priest priest. From the standpoint of somebody coming, you're going to not find anybody more welcoming than you will talking to him, whether he knows you or not. And it becomes very obvious he's very caring, he's welcoming, and he's willing to, he wants almost to be your friend before he does, before you even know it. So he, he is really a truly unique individual. Reverend William S. Keach, Obley of St. Francis de Sales, was born on February 22, 1926, to Harry Keach and Nellie Gallagher in the Quaker Hill section of Wilmington, Delaware, then a blue-collar working neighborhood known for strong community relations. Father Bill grew up with two brothers, George and Harry Jr. The family belonged to the Cathedral of St. Peter's Parish and Father Bill enrolled in St. Peter's Cathedral School in 1930. He made his sacraments of baptism, reconciliation, and confirmation at the cathedral in 1932. In the 40s, Silesium School was still located at the original location of 8th and West Street in Wilmington. Just a few blocks from the Keach home, Father Bill entered as a sophomore and enjoyed three years at the school. He recalls participating in award-winning one-act play contests directed by Reverend Joseph McCoy, Abbe St. Francis de Sales, then principal. In June of 1943, Father Bill graduated from Silesianum, and today he is the last living graduate of his class. After graduation, Father Bill cared for his aging parents and planned to join the Oblates. Like so many Silesianum graduates, Father Bill was drafted into the Army, and in 1944 he found himself on the USS Manhattan, a converted luxury liner, on his way to becoming a member of the Occupation Forces of Northern Italy. Stationed in Gorizia, a part of the 88th Blue Devil Infantry Division, Father Bill was part of the Mechanized Cavalry, and after taking classes to become a radio operator, he earned the rank of a T-4 technical sergeant. He was officially honorably discharged in January of 1947. After his discharge, Father Bill entered the Oblates and took his first profession of vows on September 8, 1948. In fact, I'm wearing the uh, Salesian Veterans Committee pin. He was instrumental in helping us to organize the uh, Salesian Alumni Veterans Committee. Uh, being a veteran of World War II himself. Father Bill's first assignment as an oblate was teaching biology and English at oblate-run North Catholic High School in Northeast Philly, 
With an enrollment of 4,000 boys in 1949, the school served students from the Philadelphia Northeast as well as the suburbs. Father Bill had 50 boys in his classes, including biology lab, where boys had to sit on the windowsills. In 1953, North was the world's largest Catholic high school for boys. While teaching at North for two years, Father Bill lived with his brother Oblates at 13th and Pine in the North Annex Faculty Building, and they often took the L to school. He left North and continued his studies at Catholic University towards his master's degree in American history. Father Bill made his perpetual profession in 1951, and six years later, on June 8th of 1957, he was ordained at St. Anthony's Church in Wilmington, Delaware. The following year, Father Bill joined the faculty at Slesianum School. When we came in, there was a gentleman standing in front of a classroom who sort of became an institution. I mean, at that point in time, he was relatively a young priest. Even though he had been in the war, he got into the priesthood later in life. So he came in and immediately was confronted with 320 semi-crazy, semi-intelligent young men. It didn't matter who you were. He had an ability to just become friends with you. He was an excellent teacher. He got me very interested in history. To this day, I, I read a lot of history, and it just formed a relationship. If you talk to my classmates today, they'll all talk about Father Keach. Of course, I met Father Keach while I was a student at Salesianum. A lot of young kids probably wouldn't know this today, but he resembled Gene Kelly, the famous dancer. He loved the dance, and he was that kind of a guy, approachable, and uh, Always a smile on his face. A great priest, you know. Uh, they, they would admire him. Uh, friendly guy. Uh, they would look at him as a, uh, as a father figure, and uh, they respected him a lot, and, and they loved him. In his decade of service at Silesianum, Father Bill taught history, biology, English, religion. Best known, perhaps, is Father Bill's contribution to the drama program at Silesianum where he worked closely with the legend Father John Sprague, an oblate of St. Francis de Sales. Father Bill has countless memories of these shows. Among his favorites are The Sound of Music, Carousel, and Finian's Rainbow. Father Bill left Slesianum in 1967 to support his brother Oblates as Director of Vocations, Director of Brothers, and Director of Pashlins at Brisson Seminary, then located at Allentown College, known today as DeSales University. In his role, Father Bill helped young men in their discernment process. Returning to academia in 1973, Father Bill moved back to Delaware and served at Padua Academy, where he learned that there was a great difference in teaching girls and teaching boys. In his nine years there, Father Bill interacted with every level of the community. He served as religious superior, vice principal, moderator of the Mother's Club, director of alumni, participated in many clubs and activities, and also taught at St. Francis School of Nursing, run by the Sisters of St. Francis of Philadelphia, an order founded by St. John Neumann. The Oblates were granted administration of St. Cecilia's Parish in Florida. Father Bill traded his snow boots for sunshine and became the first Oblate pastor at this parish in Fort Myers, Florida. He has fond memories of the people in that parish and still stays in touch with a few parishioners. Father Bill left sunny southwest Florida and returned to the first state. In 1987, Father Bill returned to St. Anthony's as their associate pastor and later became the pastor. He was warmly welcomed back to the community. We had the joy of having him in our family as being a part of our needs in regards to weddings and funerals and baptisms. He always was our minister for all of these occasions. And he was the pastor at St. Anthony's. and. Uh... That was always, I think, an interesting experience for him. Um, big parish, big Italian parish at that time. And here was this Irish priest. <laughs> he was well liked, he was well loved. Father Bill left St. Anthony's in 1994 to work in the Oblate Development Office as Director of Deferred Giving until he retired. Well, we always have coffee and cinnamon buns. <laughs> 
to this day, I will go to Booth's Corner and get cinnamon buns for him. And uh, we will sit and, uh, and chat. Even though he officially retired in 2000, Father Bill continued to work closely with the Oblate Development Office through 2014. This allowed him to remain in touch with many students and parishioners he served in his six decades as an Oblate. He cherished the opportunity to maintain these special relationships and meet new supporters as well. Retirement for Father Bill is an opportunity to do things he didn't have the time to do before, like paint and read. A lot of times we'll pick up the phone and call and just to say hello, how you doing? There are guys that, you know, from Silesiana that have such fondness of Father Keach, he never has to worry about getting a ride anywhere or going anywhere because somebody's always willing to be there for him, to take him wherever he needs to go and to be with him. He describes retirement as a time to take inventory of my own person and assess what I have done and what I need to do to keep me close to God and in loving relationship with those around me. Throughout his whole ministerial life, Father Bill touched the hearts of hundreds of families. For many, Father Bill was an integral part of their lives and a significant person in their spiritual journey. He has remained connected with many alumni of the Silesianum community and regularly joins them for monthly breakfast meetings, couples dinners, and other events. He remains very connected to Silesianum, where he was inducted into the Silesianum Hall of Fame in 2014. Father Keach cherished his role as uncle to the children and grandchildren of his brother George and Harry Jr. His brother, Harry Jr., had three boys, as well as stepsons. They all have children. Father Bill's brother George had three children, who have seven children and seven grandchildren, each very special to their great uncle Bill. He is close to them and a fixture at many special events in their lives, sacraments, graduations, weddings, holidays, and birthdays, and so much more. Father Keech's brothers passed away decades ago, but they live on in their children and grandchildren. Today, much of Father Bill's time is spent painting. Though he didn't discover painting until later in his life, his days are now spent at the canvas. In June of last year, Father Bill celebrated 63 years as a priest, living Jesus in all he does. Presently, he is our oldest oblate in the Wilmington, Philadelphia province. He is beloved by so many. It is impossible to count the lives he has touched in his 95 years on this earth. His is a long and beautiful life of oblate priestly ministry. He was consistent. He was consistent, and there was never a time that you didn't feel that he was priestly. He's able to challenge you in faith matters because you know he loves you, and that's why he wants to do that for you. A good friend, a good friend. And you can't say much more than, when you're a good friend, you're a good friend. He's just been, um, you know, a good, a good friend and a good priest. I, I consider myself very lucky. Very lucky. Yeah, you know, in all honesty, I, you know, I'm now older, and I have never met anybody I admire more. He's probably second to my father for people who have had an influence in my life. In August of 2019, my classmates and I took vows of chastity, poverty, and obedience for the first time as Oblates of St. Francis de Sales. In the vow formula, we said, I give myself with my whole heart to this religious family. And as we all know, we cannot choose our family. In marriage, you can choose your spouse and for better or for worse, inherit the family they bring with them. The same goes for us here in religious life. While you can choose and discern the congregation that you choose to belong to, upon taking vows, you inherit a new family and a legacy that that family has as well. As young oblates, we are taught to not take for granted this family and the nearly 150-year-old tradition and legacy that we have inherited. Because of the work, prayers, and efforts of our good mother, Father Brisson, and the countless oblates who have gone before us, 
You and I have come to know the impact that the Oblates of St. Francis de Sales have had in our lives. Salesian spirituality emphasizes the value of good and holy relationships. It's no surprise then that you and I can easily imagine the many ways that the Oblates have welcomed us into their lives as family. We also know how the current pandemic has challenged the way in which we are capable of relating to and appreciating our families, most especially our senior members. To prevent the spread of the virus, our senior Oblates living in our retirement home have not had any visitors since March of 2020. When this quarantine was implemented, Friends and family of our senior oblates reached out to us as to how they might remain connected with our senior members. Thus, the Adopt an Oblate program was created. Over the past few months, it has provided our men in retirement the opportunity to connect with people in the outside world, some of whom they haven't heard from in years. Family, friends, old parishioners, and students have reached out to support and connect with the Oblates who've so wonderfully impacted their lives. In thanksgiving for these renewed relationships, our senior Oblates regularly pray, privately and at Mass, for those who have, they have connected with through the Adopt a Senior Oblate program in support and love. In the tradition of the Good Mother, I will keep this brief. As part of our Oblate family, we would love for you to join us in supporting and lifting up the spirits of our senior Oblates who are challenged by the effects of quarantine and isolation. All you have to do is visit our website at oblates.org and enroll in the program. You can choose the Oblate you want to connect with, or we can connect you with one of the Oblates who would most benefit from your love and support. As St. Francis de Sales says, we have no bond but the bond of love which is the bond of perfection. By supporting this effort, you help us perfect this familial bond of love. So thank you for the love you've shown to us Oblates over the years, and double thanks if you've discerned to support one of my senior brothers through the Adopt a Senior Oblate program. May God be praised by your good deeds. On behalf of the Wilmington, Philadelphia province of the Oblates of St. Francis de Sales, 
It is my great pleasure and distinct honor to present you, Father Bill Keach, with the inaugural Salesian Service Award. This great honor is presented to an individual who, like you, enables and embodies the spirit of St. Francis de Sales in both words and actions, and who shares Salesian spirituality in all that they do. Father Bill, you have dedicated 63 years of your life as an oblate priest in a generous and selfless ministry to others, sharing with them our beloved spirituality as an educator, a pastor, an administrator, and a friend. Father Bill, this award comes with the love and prayers of all your oblate brothers, as well as all those countless men and women to whom you have ministered with such love and joy over all these many years. And so, congratulations and God's blessings on you, Father William J. Keach, Oblate of St. Francis de Sales, as the very first recipient of the Salesian Service Award. God bless you. Thank you very much, Father. I'm very, very grateful for this. I find difficulty understanding why people get awarded for doing things that they love. Years ago, when I first started high school, I, I believe in divine providence, so when I started high school, it was during the Depression. My father was not a Catholic. My older brother was in school, and my father said he couldn't afford to send both of us. But he went to see Father McCoy, and Father McCoy said, let them both come for $55 each, because it was a lot of money even in those days. If it had not, my father had not taken that step, nor had Father McCoy agreed, I would never even know who the Oblates were. So I believe in divine providence. And also, being a priest and so forth, I didn't think I had the ability or anything else to teach school, to be a pastor, to give counsel, or to do anything like that. But I also learned that if God gives you something to do, He gives you the ability to do it. So again, I believe in divine providence. And I am thankful to God, and I am thankful to you for this great award. God bless you. Thank you, Father. Celebrating the remarkable life of Father Bill and his incredible 95 years presents us with the opportunity to thank you who have helped us to provide safe and loving care for Father Bill and for all his retired Oblate brothers. Just as so many of you work to ensure that your loved ones experience the last chapters of their lives in a dignified and meaningful way, we too work so that Oblates who have selflessly dedicated their lives to serving others may now have some quality time to enjoy a prayerful and dignified retirement. Whether in a school, a parish, a hospital, or as social workers, missionaries, or military chaplains, retired Oblates have dedicated decades to meeting the spiritual and human needs of countless others. Now those others are called forward to meet the needs of these good men. The median age of the men in our province today is 70 and 40% of them are living in retirement. Oblates have many choices in determining where they will spend their retirement years. For our approach to placement is a person-centered one. The majority of our retired men, however, 30% of the province, opt to live at Annecy Hall, our retirement and assisted care facility in Childs, Maryland. Annecy Hall is situated on more than 300 acres of beautiful Maryland farmland. Many of the men who live there today first came to Childs when they joined the Oblates many years ago, as the same location once housed our novitiate. One of our fathers who passed away last year once described Childs in this way. This is the most peaceful place in my life. His fellow Oblates are grateful for the tranquility and the setting of the place. But if you were to come at mealtime or at recreation, 
The quiet is replaced with animated conversation and frequent hearty laughter. As an assisted living community, there is a dedicated nursing staff at Childs that meets the health needs of our men with both medical competency and genuine human kindness and care. Other Oblates choose to spend their retirement years living at the Salesianum Oblate community in Wilmington, Delaware. Together with Father Bill, eight men enjoy the opportunity to live in community with young seminarians and to attend events hosted by the Salesianum community. Special to them are the invitations they receive to celebrate school liturgies and to help with the penance services for students and faculty. Wills Haw at DeSales University in Center Valley, Pennsylvania is home to three retired oblates and parishes in Philadelphia, Charlotte, North Carolina, Northern Virginia, and Southwest Florida all have retired oblates in residence. No matter where oblates live and how they spend their retirement, we could not provide such safe, loving, and dignified care for them if it were not for your support. Your generosity helps us fulfill our commitment to care for our retired oblate priests and brothers. And we are deeply grateful to you for your prayers, for your friendship, and for your financial support. As we celebrate Father Bill's rich and full life, we see so clearly the countless lives that he has touched in such a beautiful way. If we multiply the lives impacted by the other retired oblates, their numbers would certainly be in the thousands. We do not need to speak to you of the many challenges involved in caring for our retired confreres. Many of you and your families are faced with the same medical bills, doctor visits, and rising health care costs as life expands and needs grow. You know how hard these years can be, how quickly someone's health can fail, and how fragile life at times is. You know the additional challenges that a pandemic brings with it. And you know that retirement and the end of life involve dealing with social, medical, physical, spiritual, and so many other basic human needs. We are so grateful that Father Bill has spent two decades enjoying a safe, dignified, and meaningful retirement. It has been a truly fulfilling and joyful time for him. I'm happy to say that the same is true for our other men in retirement. We know for certain that none of this would be possible without your wonderfully generous and caring help. So I want to take this opportunity to thank each of you from the bottom of my heart for helping us to care for Father Bill and for all his retired Oblate brothers. May God bless you, each of you, in ways that he knows best. Good and gracious God, I thank you for Father Bill's long and beautiful life of oblate priestly ministry. We are told as young oblates to live Jesus in our own lives of prayer, community, and service, and to assist all those we serve to live Jesus in their own lives with the family, friends, co-workers, and especially with the stranger, the poor, and the marginalized. Father Bill has certainly learned that lesson well, for he has been the face of Jesus for countless others over the course of his seven decades of oblate life and his 63 years of priestly ministry. Good God, Father Bill knows, as does every oblate, that our lives as religious and as priests and brothers would not be possible without the prayers and support of our families and friends. We are especially grateful for our many benefactors without whose generosity none of the good we do would be possible. They are partners with us in the gospel work of spreading the good news of Jesus, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. St. Francis de Sales, our patron, pray for us. 
Blessed Louis Brisson, our founder, pray for us. And may God be praised. Amen.